Hello and welcome back to another video. For episode 2 of The Art of Game Design, we're going to be covering the creation of a video game soundtrack from scratch, covering all the basics, going through the process of actually creating the music, and then some of the music design philosophies I covered in my previous game design video, which you can check out in the description. Throughout the process, I will be referencing some of my favorite game composers and exactly how they make the music to help in the journey. This video is mostly aimed more at solo developers or small teams creating their own soundtrack for their own game. Before you start anything, you should establish the overarching tone or theme of the game. This tone should direct the overall sound of the soundtrack. Obviously the songs will differ, in fact they may be very different, from very bouncy and happy to disturbing or sad. It always depends on the scene, character, or area of the game. For this video I will be creating five pieces of music and going through the entire process of creating each one. My first one is going to be a character theme based on a character that you create for the game perhaps, battle music or excitement music, a sad kind of melancholic tone song, and then an area based track which is more ambient kind of in the background but sets the tone or atmosphere for a particular area. The first thing you're going to need is a DAW. The one I highly, highly recommend and the one I'm going to be using for this video is FL Studio. There are many other ones such as Ableton Live or Pro Tools or Cubase or something of that kind. I mean, you could even use GarageBand if you really wanted to. So the first song or theme I'm going to be tackling is a character theme. So let's just pull up a random character that I made. Okay, so this is the character I'm going to try to make a song for. He's kind of weird and really ugly looking and kind of goofy. You kind of have to figure out like who the character is, what he does, what his purpose is, you know, what his personality is like, and that'll help direct the music. So for this character, I'm going for quirky, mysterious, and kind of a drifter. So let's try to think about those things when going into the song. And also just think about his appearance, I guess. <laughs> I would like to note that knowing basic music theory or at least an instrument is going to be extremely helpful. If you do not know anything about music, this will be kind of difficult and uh, you might not get the result that you're hoping for. So when Toby Fox was making Undertale, he used sound fonts from Earthbound in a lot of his music. So he would use instruments that were used for the Super Nintendo Entertainment System for Earthbound or Mother 3 and he would use it in the soundtrack. So that's what I'm going to be doing. This is a virtual instrument called Esferzondo, and as you can see, I have imported uh, all kinds of game instruments. So there's Kirby's Dreamland, there's Mother 3, Secret of Mana, Super Mario World, Yoshi's Island, Chrono Trigger. These are the sounds that I'm going to be using for the track. I recommend watching a tutorial on FL Studio Basics just to kind of know what you're doing when you're playing with FL Studio. Now I'm going to go up here to the piano roll and we're going to try to figure something out. Now there are many, many directions you can start. One of the most difficult things for me is figuring out how to start. You can either start with a melody or just chords. Or you can even start with a rhythm. Something like that. For this one, I'm going to try going with the melody first. If I'm trying to find a melody, I'll usually kind of sing it in my head or just sing it to myself and just kind of see what happens kind of just out of thin air randomly. Now I'm trying to keep in mind the quirky, mysterious, and drifter themes. One of the ways Toby Fox did it for the Undertale soundtrack was he would sit down at a piano and he would just kind of play on the piano and try to find a melody that he liked and then just, you know, start working on the computer. But if you don't have a piano, you can always start with yourself or just on the computer. I think for this, I'm going to try just doing some stuff on the piano. So I'm trying to think of things that are quirky, kind of mysterious. He's kind of a drifter character, but he's also, maybe he's a little goofy. So now that I kind of played around on the piano and tried to just figure out a melody, I'm going to try to put it into the program. So I'll just try to do it by ear. Okay, so I'm going to tap out the tempo that I was doing it in. So 
So obviously that will change over time, but I, re I like how it turned out. So now I'm just gonna loop that. Uh, I did that by holding control to select everything and then holding shift to drag a duplication of everything. So usually what I do is instead of having this loop the same, so it'll go like this. And then it will change. So now that the melody is down, we're going to have to come up with the chords. I'm going to choose a different instrument for the chords or the harmony underneath. Thing maybe from Kirby's Dreamland. A lot of these are going to need um, mixing and tuning because uh, right now in their raw state, they're kind of uh, weird sounding. But let me try figuring out some chords for this. So the first note in the melody is a C sharp or a, I guess it'll be a D flat in this case. So I just built a D flat major seven. <laughs> at least I think it is. I'm not very good at music theory, but I'm pretty sure that is. So if you don't know anything about music theory, I recommend uh, looking into how to make chords and from how to make chords, how to make like extensions. So like you'll have a like a D flat major and then you add the seventh. Now a really good technique is to take the third of the chord, which is this one, grab it and then put it up an octave. In FL Studio, you hold control and press the up arrow. Sounds kind of weird now, actually. Actually, not okay. I put the whole chord down an octave, and now it sounds better. Maybe it shouldn't all play at once. Maybe it should go like uh, something like this. So I'm kind of doing a weird rhythm here. So it's like do 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 do. A lot of the times, it's kind of just trial and error. I think. So the next chord should be, should at least have an A flat in the top, I guess. Well, that's kind of cool. You know, the first, okay, so the first time I listened to this chord, it sounded kind of dissonant. It sounds kind of strange, but I think that adds to the quirky and mysterious nature of it. So it's not like you have to have perfect music if the music is kind of trying to say something about the character. So maybe this last chord could like change. Okay, so this is the chord progression so far. I chose this um, playback tool so I can just play the chords. Honestly, I just kind of placed notes around um, to see if it sounded like a good progression. You don't need to know what you're doing if it sounds good, you know what I mean? So I just copied over the chords and we're gonna play through what we have. So I'm gonna refer back to the video that I recorded myself figuring out this melody on and I'm gonna see what I did for the other section because I remember doing some kind of slower paced like B section kind of thing. Okay, so the chord, since there's an empty spot here, the chords kind of turn into the, like an added melody, and that was like an accidental, it was an accident, but it sounded really cool. A lot of that, a lot of the times when you're making music, there will be happy accidents like that, and I think that sounded really nice. That's a, that's a really cool section. I like that, that's cool. All right, so now I'm going to, um, just kind of duplicate that because that was kind of just a bridge into the next uh, just into the same loop so I guess this could technically just loop forever but maybe we want to make it more interesting and add more uh, elements to it the next thing I'm gonna try to add is a bass line because I think that uh, right now the only bass we have is that this one note 
I think it needs to have a little more reinforcement. And also the melody needs a little more reinforcement. Uh, and I'll maybe add a layer to it or add some flourishes with another instrument. And this, I think this section needs a little more like prettiness, I guess. I think I'm gonna go with Earthbound's On It bass because uh, it's one of my favorites. First what I'm gonna do is grab all the bass notes and copy them and just uh, kind of bring them over. So I want to add like a little more movement to the bass line. Okay, so I added uh, a lot of movement to the bass. Let's hear that. Okay, I think the melody needs to be louder because uh, like the movement of the bass is kind of distracting from the melody because it's already, like the bass itself is, al is almost melodious. So it kind of distracts from the other melody. So I think it needs to be pushed back a little more. A little louder, maybe give a little reverb, not that much. Okay, so I replaced, uh, I replaced the chord sound with something <laughs> kind of weird like this. I don't know, maybe I'll change it, but it sounds nice. It's from uh, Yoshi's Island. So I'm trying to layer the melody just so it can give it a little more impact. So I'm gonna try the Super Mario World piano. And I want it, since I want like a lot of spatial stuff, I'm gonna put it in the right ear. I'm gonna try, okay, I always add like very subtle reverb to everything. I'm gonna try adding like a, like a tape delay to it, just see what happens. Basically what a delay does is add echo. Okay, I'm going to add an intro because I think it starts off too impactful. So usually for the intro, what I'll do is I'll try actually the B section chords. I think that'll be interesting. Okay, so this section needs something in the right ear because <laughs> it's a lot. There's a lot of left field force. So I think I'll add something here with this uh, melody two line. So one thing you can do is if you want to change it, you can click here and make it unique, and then you can edit it without editing all the others. So what I'm doing to the second uh, melody in the B section thing is adding like a little grace note. So it's like, Okay, so this kind of bled over into the next section, but I actually like how it layers, even though it's just like a duplicate of this. Uh, so maybe I'll just add something different. Okay, so the next thing I want to add is percussion, so like drums and stuff. I don't, I don't know if drums will sound good. I'm kind of thinking maybe uh, some drums will take away from it, but like maybe a simple hi-hat and a simple like snare beat or something would make it sound good. So what I'm going to do is grab a drum kit from uh, a Yoshi's Island maybe, a Yoshi's Island drum kit. Let's hear that sounds. Okay, so what kind of rhythm am I thinking? Um, Okay, so this is the rhythm I came up with. So what I just did there was uh, highlight all these hi-hats and press Alt-R to give it some randomized velocity so it sounds a little more realistic. I think I'll do that again a little bit subtly with the snare. Okay, so I uh, added some drums to the intro, just hi-hats, and then uh, fixed some of the drums up. Uh, 
Now what I want to do is just kind of do an outro section uh, and just change the melody. Okay, so I've changed the melody of the last part. And for the right ear, I guess the other added texture, I added this thing. And I gave it a fake delay. So I just basically went down here to the velocity and made these two later notes like kind of fade out. Something worth noting also is that this is going to be presumably looping forever in a game. Uh, not forever, but forever looping for however long you want it to loop. So having the very last part transition into the beginning of the song is what you really want to do. I think my transition is a little awkward, but I think it's fine. So it kind of, I made this pattern unique and changed the end so it transitions into the very beginning. So to hear that. So the character theme took about an hour and 30 minutes, uh, and that's only one of five. And I realize now that this is kind of a daunting task. Uh, so I'm gonna try to cut things down a lot. Next is the battle theme. So the battle theme is usually pretty fast. In fact, I'll probably put it at uh, 170, which is pretty fast. And where to start with a the battle theme? A lot of the times with a the battle theme, I'll start out with a bass line because the, for me, the bass line gives so much uh, give so much tempo and rhythm and power to the uh, battle. So a lot of the a lot of good basses come from the square. I love the square bass. It's pretty loud and um violent, so it's going to be it's going to have to be turned down, but All right, I'm going to try some power chords. I'll look at the bass note of the bass line, which is a G. So I'll probably make a G chord, or it could be, since the fifth down, a D. Okay, it's a little strange sounding. But, uh, okay, I need to change this instrument. I think it's too nasty. Okay, so I completely changed the bass sound and the bass line, or the rhythm of it at least. And then, uh, changed the sound and added a lot of effects. Uh, an equalizer to get rid of the bass and some of the highs. Reverb, a little delay, and a compressor just to make it sound a little brighter. That note is a little sour. Does this sound remind you of anything? This is one of my favorite pad sounds uh, from the Earthbound sound font. So what I'm doing is just outlining the chords with that pad. I'm gonna see if it sounds any good. Oh, that sounds, yeah, it does sound good. Now it doesn't sound very battly yet, but that's because a lot of the battly stuff comes from a very rapid melody and very rapid percussion. Ooh, let me put the ninth up there. Okay, these are how the drums turned out. So I have a different kick drum uh, because the one in this drum kit sounded bad. And uh, yeah, I'll have like pitched hi-hats here. This rapid snare. So I added this thing that descends into it. And this like, kind of a, 
it's not really a melody, it's just kind of uh, the notes of the chord just going up and down randomly. But it sounds nice in the mix of it all. That alone sounds really pretty. Okay, so my idea for the way this song was going to progress is that there's going to be a build-up and then kind of a, a, a larger drop kind of deal where uh, I'm going to make it all based on the melody and then do all the harmony underneath because I kind of want to do a rapid and like very like angular melody that changes chords a lot and I feel like it's easier to feel where the chord should go if I know where the notes are. And for this particular melody, I'm going to try to sing it in my in my head or sing it and hum it to myself. So this is the build up that I have for it. And then uh, after these drums, will be that melody. So I'm going to try to figure this out. Okay, so from that, uh, from me recording my kind of just making random melodies with my voice that came up with this, it's a little rough uh, and it's kind of out of tempo, which is going to make it very difficult, but here it is. So the first thing I'm going to do is try to get the chords in here. Okay, so uh, a lot has happened. Unfortunately, I lost the recording of the creation of this and uh, this section, but I will go through what I did quickly. First, what I did was I fixed the melody and changed the instrument. Because the other melody was so out of like tempo and tune, it was impossible to work with. So uh, I tried to quantize everything, which is to make sure everything is like on the line and fits the tempo. But even so, like uh, I realized that um, it's a really like kind of weird beat. It's kind of like modern and like weird and jazzy, which is not what I expected to be making in this video, but. Uh, I, I like it. Then there's a the bass line. And again, the bass line is always just complementing the bottom note of the chords or the fifth of the chord. So these chords are very strange and I kind of just place them willy-nilly. Also, this is a very uh, common thing to do, is to go up like this. Because this chord is literally just the same if you move it down a half step, but you just move it up a half step. I did the same here. This goes down a half step. This goes down a half step. That's lots of nice technique. Then I added this Rhodes thing. So those are all the same chords, it's just wanted to add some rhythmic stuff to it. The way I made these like kind of sway like this was I took a normal chord and I hit Alt S and then it skews it. Oh and I forgot to mention that uh, the melody that was kind of sparse here as I said, I made it an actual melody so it's a lot faster. And I uh, added this bridge section into this new section that I made. So I love this really fast thing. I don't know, you just kind of place notes around. 
beat, and then there were these fast chords. And it all kind of just like adds a lot of crazy rhythm. Then it transitioned into this thing, which I think is very pretty. Okay, so I added the coin sound from Yoshi's Island. And um, this is a serum instrument. So for that instrument, I kind of went outside the realm of sound fonts and went to an actual synthesizer. And this is just a vocal chop uh, synthesizer, so it makes like a vocal sound. Also, yeah, it bends. And the way I made it bend in Serum was going down here, making legato and adding portamento to it and making sure it was a mono uh, lead, which means it can only play one note at a time. What I wanted to do was go from this chord into a, so it's like duh, and then duh. So I just kind of felt what that chord sounded like. So it's like, da, da, you hear that? So I wanted that kind of transition, uh, and it transitions very well. So let's take a look at these chords. So what I wanted to do was voice these chords so that there's a pedal tone. So there's, a, so there's this D note that stays the same throughout, and that just goes up. It stays on this D sharp. And then there's a ascension of the F, but it goes down to the D. And all the while, these chords are changing underneath the D. I just, what I did was I chose four chords that have the D in it. And then what I did was I just put the, the D on top and put all the chord information underneath. And, you know, a lot of these decisions were arbitrary, but, and I'm pretty sure these are all just seven chords. Like, this is an A, A flat major seven. This is like a, an E flat major seven. You know, it's pretty much just all major seven chords, except for maybe a few. Major seven chords are just my favorite chords. They're so pretty. Another technique when making chords is to make sure as little of the notes move as possible. This is called voice leading. So, for instance, these are very basic uh, chords. And a way you can make them sound a lot better is trying to make the notes move as little as possible. So I'll put this one up here. I'll try to put this up here and this up here. So it almost looks like none of these notes even move. And that just makes it sound a little bit better even though these, these chords are kind of bad anyways. Next, what I did up here is I took these chords, copied them into that Rhodes instrument, and then what I did was I selected everything by doing Control A, and I hit Alt A, and I made it an arpeggiator, so it makes all the notes descend like this, and you can change the settings. Then I just added Again, these are the exact same chords, but I added a little rhythm. Then I added this pumping bass line. transitions back into this weird section. Oh, and by the way, if you want to check out these tracks, you can go in the description and click the Bandcamp or SoundCloud link to check out the albums. Also, maybe I should change the title from How to Make a Video Game Soundtrack to Watching a Guy Make a Video Game Soundtrack. I realize this may be a bit boring, but I really hope this helps people. Okay, so next is the melancholic or sad theme. So usually sadder tracks or melancholic tracks have very simple, very easy to play melodies. When Shogo Sakai was making the love theme for Mother 3, he made it very pertinent that 
it could be played by a child on one finger and that was kind of his philosophy when creating the melody and even in the his theme motif for undertale you can see how simple it is like the whole melody is contained within these five notes uh, including sometimes the sixth note so a simple melody is what I'm going for also, if you want to make a sad song, you have to have a chromatic descending bass line. So what I mean by that is the bass line descends by half steps. Okay, so I recorded a melody with my voice again. It's a uh, something like that. Okay, so I realized that the melody was just doing the same G note every time, but I realized that when it goes back down, I could make the chromatic descending bass line here, and it turned out pretty good. And also, as I always do, I take the second copy of the melody and change it a bit. Okay, so this is what I've done. I layered the melody and added like uh, some extra notes. And also changed the instrument. And this thing, uh, this descension. When you have like a two half steps in between, uh, it's always nice to make it descend all the way to the next note. I really like that kind of uh, tone. Okay, then I added a bass line, which is just the bass. With like a the da 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 rhythm so i put the melody in the left ear and then i added uh, a yoshi's island music box to the right ear it's just kind of playing a single note with some like little dissensions Okay, so the way I kind of feel this song progressing is it's just slowly adding more and more elements until I get to another kind of B section thing. So the next element I've added is a snare roll. So you go into the piano roll and you can drag one of the drum rolls onto here and it'll just create a MIDI pattern of a drum roll. Okay, so the next thing I added was in this section, I kind of kind of changed the melody. I kept the underlying melody, but I totally added a kind of, I guess, a counter melody to it. So there's another melody going on. So it's this. Then I changed up this a little bit to add some more variation. And now we're gonna progress into the next section. So I decided to go here with a not descending bass line. And I'm just gonna mess with chords here. Okay, so this is what I did for the other section. Here are the chords. Okay, and then it's just the bass. So these are just a lot of major seven chords, again, with a lot of added ninths and uh, another pedal tone of D. So here's a D, here's a D. So that adds a lot of uh, texture to that. Next thing I did was change the melody. Okay, here's what I want this note to fade out. So what I'm gonna do is Hold shift and control to highlight that specific area. I'm going to right click the volume and create an automation clip. 
and I'll just go like this to fade it out. Uh, well, then I have to bring it back up to the same volume uh, because it will change everything else. There we go. So now that note should fade out. Yeah, that's cool. And for this third part, I added a very uh, strange chord change right here. Just to add some like strange uh, variety and uh, dissonant quality to it. Okay, so here's an interesting thing I did with the note. I made it slide down, if you can hear it. It's like, no. So how I did that was I kind of extended the note a little bit over the bar and I went down to control and went to channel pitch and as the note went down I kind of just dragged this uh, line all the way down and then came back up and turned it back to zero because if you don't bring it back up to this line it'll change the pitch for this instrument forever and it'll be very difficult to um, figure out what's wrong unless you do that. So you can hear um, the slide. Well, that slides into the next chord a lot better because the transition I thought was a little awkward, but now it's a lot better. A good technique for melodies is to stack it in a thirds, so C and E are a third apart. Uh, it creates a nice tone. Or you can do it in fourths like this one. Okay, so I wanted a kind of slow paced outro, so what I did was I just took that same uh, music box melody from here and put it there, but added a triangle wave. And added like it's there's a copy of that but with some more melodic things in it and I put it in both ears by taking a stereo shaper and uh, moving the delay a little bit so it sounds like it's kind of in the left and right ear like very close and together it sounds very nice Then to add some texture, I just made this little uh, pad thing and uh, duplicated the note a little bit lower. All right, so that's the kind of uh, emotional or melancholic, sad music. You know, the more I listen to the song, it sounds more happy, sad. So I think this wouldn't be for like a character dying, but I think this would be better suited for maybe the end of the game where everyone comes together and they finally get to achieve their goal or something. You know, it's like, this is like the emotional ending music or something. On to the next track, which should be a lot easier. Okay, so for the area-based ambient track, I'm going to be using some instruments that were used on the one-shot soundtrack, such as the Fab Filter Twin and uh, FM8. These give very beautiful ambient tones. In FL Studio, there's this cool stamp tool. You can get all kinds of different chords. So suspended chords with like sounds like that can give a very airy and spacey feel. Since this is an area based track, we should probably take a look at an area and looking at that area will give us an idea of how the music should go. So for this example, I'm going to use this as an excuse to work on the song for my train car scene. Basically it's a very chill area where you kind of walk around the train and talk to people. So it doesn't have to be a very in your face song, it doesn't have to need very important melodies or anything. And also to tie in episode 1. I'm going to try to use a motif. So let's say that the character that we used for the first track in this video was on this train and he was a big, maybe he's the conductor, maybe he's an important part of this train. He's a drifter so he's on the train. I'm going to try to use his melody in subtle ways in this song because it's always important to have 
interrelated music. So, you know, themes will connect, characters will connect to places, you know, stuff like that. Okay, so I found this cool uh, effect called Surfside Beach. It has like birds and noises and stuff. It's really pretty with the chords. And so I, I brought back the character theme melody, but I changed it a bit so it wasn't the exact same. The next thing this song needs is bass because there's almost no bass present. Alright, so I added a bass line. It's very kind of like Aphex Twin style, it's very weird. I automated the panning on this arpeggio, uh, which is just the chords, and then I did Alt A, and so it goes from left to right to left to give us kind of more spacey vibe. Also, the effects I put on this are a vinyl, so it's a little rougher. Uh, it's so there's wear on the sound, and there's some warp. Also, Valhalla Vintage. Also, Valhalla Vintage Verb gives a really large reverb or space sound. Also, since it's supposed to be a train, I wanted to add like a kind of a chugging rhythm. So I found this arpeggiator thing. So it's like, I guess, I guess there's a train theme in there. Alright, I think that'll do it for this track, and I think that'll do it for the video. I hope you enjoyed, and I hope it helped you in your journey on making some music. If you have any questions at all, I will be happy to answer in the comments. If you have any complaints, I'll be happy to hear them. If you have any suggestions for the next episode, please do give some suggestions, and make sure to check out the finished music. Thank you guys so much for watching, this was a lot of fun. I really enjoyed making these songs. And I hope you enjoyed watching me make them. And I hope you learned a lot along the way. Bye. See you in the next one.